Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to this course, uh, which will introduce you to OpenBIS. And we're very happy to have Katrina Bariari and Rosislav Kuziakiv giving the course today. <laughs> So um, we will talk about uh, um, how to manage research data with uh, with OpenBIS. So first of all, I just uh, want to say a few words about uh, who we are. Um, we are the scientific IT services of uh, the ETH Zurich. We are a large section of the central IT services of uh, ETH Zurich. We have over 40 um, people in our uh, group that uh, have different uh, scientific competencies and we all have, or most of us ha have a scientific background. Um, we do different things at ETH. We actually have four groups in our section. So we go from maintaining the uh, clusters at ETH, the uh, high performance computing, to developing custom softwares uh, for research groups, uh, to uh, helping groups with uh, uh, data analysis, for example. And we also provide services for uh, working with uh, confidential data and services for data management. And today we will particularly the focus on the research data management part. So we develop also our own platform that is called OpenBIS for this. And OpenBIS, I would define it as a complete solution towards fair data management. There are three components in OpenBIS. One is the inventory management, which you can use to manage your samples, your materials, the reagents, uh, equipment, uh, standard operating procedures, if you have them. Then uh, there is the electronic laboratory notebook component, which you would use uh, to describe your experiments, describe all the processes and the data analysis. And finally, the data management component. So in OpenBIS, you can store data connected to your experimental descriptions or to the samples. And uh, uh, data can be of any size, really. So there is no limit for, uh, for this. The limit comes actually from the storage you have available in the back end. And you can also use uh, these uh, components uh, independently, so you don't have to use the full, uh, the, all the features of OpenBIS, you can also use uh, uh, some of them depending on, on what your needs are. So um, some information about OpenBIS, OpenBIS has been around since quite some time now, so the development started at ETH in 2007, and nowadays it is used in different quantitative scientific disciplines. So when we started, we started working primarily with um, biologists, but nowadays it is actually used in, uh, in, in different fields. So for example, material sciences is another big area where now we have several users, but also in other uh, departments at ETH, this is, uh, this is used. And here you see a few of the institutes where uh, uh, OpenBIS is currently used. So primarily it's used in uh, academic institutions, not really in, uh, in companies. And we have it at ETH Zurich, of course, but uh, also other um, institutes of the ETH domain like EMPA and PSI and other universities uh, or institutions in Switzerland. And also we have several users in, uh, uh, in, in Germany uh, specifically, but also in other European countries. So this is a picture of uh, the life cycle of research data, which you may have already seen in, um, in some, uh, if you took some data management courses, for example. Um, this, is, this shows uh, what happens to the data in uh, the life cycle of a, pro of a project. So usually you start by generating data in one way or another, by taking some measurements of something, and then you need to process this data you need to analyze this data. You need also to preserve this data, maybe not all of it, but uh, some of it. And then the most relevant data will be published and uh, hopefully also reused by, by someone else to progress in, um, with, uh, with our knowledge and scientific discoveries. And in the center, you have the data management planning because uh, you should always, at the beginning of a project, you should always plan how you're going to deal with your data, what you're going to do with your data, where, where you're going to store it, and uh, how you're going to describe it, uh, and so on. 
And where does um, OpenBIS fit in this data life cycle? So how can we help you with OpenBIS with uh, managing the data throughout the life cycle? So we can take a look at the different components. So for the data creation and data processing, basically the three um, components of OpenBIS that I mentioned at the beginning um, can, be, uh, can be useful. So we see here uh, a few screenshots of the inventory uh, component of OpenBIS. You can use the inventory, as I said at the beginning, to manage, for example, your equipments, which can be uh, any type of equipment that you use in the lab. So you can create some folders, which can be um, created uh, by the admin of the of the system um, and customized, tailored to the to the needs of the of the lab. And you see here, for example, some uh, some mixers, and then you see a table with uh, all your equipment. Then you can have the, the samples, for example, or different materials. So again, in this case, uh, this can be customized. So we provide a version of OpenBIS for life sciences, which already has some predefined types. But we also have a generic version of OpenBIS, which is empty, essentially. So all the folders and the structure need to be created by an admin of the, of the system. And also the life science version, uh, despite having some default, uh, uh, default types, it can also be further customized. And also in this case, so you see you have different folders of different collections. In this case, we have a collection of chemical uh, AD mixtures. Uh, so you see all the list of your samples. And then you can also have a collection of protocols. So these are the, um, the procedures. Uh, if you have standard procedures that you follow for some measurements, then you can store them in the inventory part of OpenBIS and they will be accessible to uh, everyone in the group. And uh, these folders, uh, access to these folders can be um, controlled. So you can decide who has access to what and what type of access you want to give. If you use OpenBIS for managing samples, you can also keep track if, uh, if you need to keep track of the samples, the positions of the samples in the different fridges and freezers that you have uh, in the lab. And you can also use uh, the barcodes to keep track of the samples. So this is a functionality that is um, now uh, more and more used in OpenBIS. So we've recently also done some further uh, developments and improvements on this functionality. Then we come to the electronic laboratory notebook part. So in OpenBIS, by default, every person gets their own folder where they can create their projects and their experiments, experimental steps, and so on. And you can control the access to this folder. So again, you can share it with the other, with your colleagues or collaborators, and you can decide what type of access you want to give it. If it, if it is read-only access, or if you want other people to also uh, be able to write uh, in your own uh, in your own folder. And this is, as I said, by default, but in some cases, uh, um, there are some groups that prefer to have an organization by project rather than by person, and this is also possible. This is supported by OpenBIS. And uh, then you have here some forms where you can uh, describe your experiment. This is uh, one of the default forms provided by OpenBIS that is called experimental step. And uh, in OpenBIS, you can also create, you see this uh, section at the bottom here that is called parents. So basically, these are connections to other entities that you have stored in OpenBIS. So for example, this is uh, um, a flow cytometry experiment, and I can connect it to the um, to the samples that I use to, um, to measure uh, in this experiment, to the protocols that I followed, and to any other materials that I have used. And these things would be stored in the inventory, and I can make these connections. And then OpenBIS builds this graph, so you can see the history of uh, what has been done. And uh, in OpenBIS, we also have an audit trail. So whenever you modify uh, something, this is tracked in the database and you see it in the history of the entity. So you can have access uh, to this table that is called entity history, and you see all the modifications that have been done by whom and when they were done. And also when you delete something, so you can delete if you have admin rights, 
uh, so it is possible to delete things. Uh, however, everything again also here is tracked in the database. So you will always see whenever something is deleted, uh, you will always see what has been deleted by whom and when. Uh, we come now to the data management part, and we see that basically in OpenBIS you have data uh, always connected to some entity. So it is either connected to an experimental description, or in some cases, maybe it makes more sense to uh, attach the data to the samples that you have, uh, that you have uh, measured. So it depends on the data model, essentially. But, open, but the data has to be connected to something. You cannot just have data lying around without uh, any, uh, any description. How do we upload data to OpenBIS? We have um, different ways to do that. The uh, simplest way would be to upload it via the web interface. So you have an upload button and you just click on that and then you will upload your data. And this is fine if the data are not too large. So we're talking about a few gigabytes. Then you have other options like the Python uh, application inter uh, programming interface, which is called PyBIS or OBIS, which is uh, our common line tool. So if you prefer to work programmatically, then this would be a good option for you, either using the command line or uh, Python scripts. Or the third option, uh, the, the fourth option, when you have uh, large data sets, this would be more recommendable, is what we call the OpenBIS Dropbox. And uh, this is uh, not to be confused with the commercial program Dropbox. This is essentially a folder where you would uh, put your data, and this can be either a uh, manual process or an automatic process. So the data can be directly transferred from a measuring instrument to uh, the Dropbox folder. And then OpenBIS has access to this folder. It constantly monitors it. And whenever it finds that there are data in this folder, then this data will be transferred to, um, to the final storage of OpenBIS. And in all cases, then you will have the data will end up in OpenBIS attached to, as I said, either an experiment or a sample. So now we come to the data analysis part. So OpenBIS itself doesn't provide anything for data analysis, but what we do is we provide a connection to some tools that are commonly used in science for analyzing data. And these tools are the Jupyter Notebooks and MATLAB. So the Jupyter Notebooks, uh, this is a, a picture of one. If you're not familiar with them, they are basically documents that combine text, code, and the results of your code. So you have everything in one single document. They are very powerful. They support more, uh, several languages, more than 40 languages, among which R and Python, which are, the, uh, in our experience, the most commonly used in uh, the scientific environment we work with. And in OpenBIS, basically what we do is uh, we can provide a Jupyter Hub server that can be connected to an OpenBIS uh, uh, instance. And what you can do is that you can launch basically notebooks, Jupyter notebooks from within uh, OpenBIS. So you can open notebooks at different levels. And this will also be seen uh, later uh, during the day. Uh, Rostik will uh, um, has a training session on this. And uh, the idea is that you open the notebook to analyze data that you have stored in OpenBIS. And then once you have finished, you will store the notebook back to OpenBIS connected to the data that you originally analyzed. It is also possible to use local Jupyter installation, so not necessarily use the Jupyter Hub server. And then using this tool, you can basically connect, you, you can have an extension, and then you can connect to OpenBIS and download your data uh, from OpenBIS, do the analysis and upload the notebooks back to OpenBIS. And for MATLAB, we provide a tool that uh, uh, essentially allows you to do uh, the same. So you can connect to an OpenBIS instance, download the data that you want to analyze, run your analysis, write your uh, uh, MATLAB script, your MATLAB, MATLAB code, and then upload everything back to OpenBIS. 
So for the data preservation um, at ETH, we provide a connection to the uh, tapes for the long-term storage, but this is not, uh, um, at ETH we provide this as a service, but uh, anyone in any places where a similar uh, backend is used for, uh, for tapes, uh, this, uh, this would also work. So what we, uh, what we do is we provide a link to Strongbox. And for the data publication, we provide a connection to two data repositories at the moment. One is the um, ETH Research Collection, and the second one is the Nodo. So ETH Research Collection is, of course, only relevant for the users at, uh, at ETH. This is the data repository of, uh, of ETH. And essentially, what you can do is you have an export to the research collection. You have a tree where you can select what you want to export. So the idea is that you will have all your data in OpenBIS because this is the tool that you use daily where you store everything. And then when it comes to the moment when you need to uh, publish this data, share this data with the community, you have an easy way of doing this. So you can select what you want to, uh, what you want to share, what you want to transfer, and then you will need to provide um, details on what type of submission this is and also the retention time. So for how long the data should be stored in the research collection. And then when you click on this export selected, what happens is that uh, in the background, a zip file is created with uh, the things that you have selected and it is transferred to the research collection. And you are also transferred to the interface of the research collection where you have to finish your submission because you need to provide additional information such as, for example, the licensing or um, other information, other metadata. And uh, in the connection to Zenodo works in a very similar way. So you have this export to Zenodo option. And uh, basically what you would do is that you select what you want to export. In this case, you need to provide uh, the title of the submission. And then again, when you click on export selected, what happens is that uh, a zip file is transferred in the background to Zenodo and you are redirected to the Zenodo interface where you would need to finish your uh, submission. So um, I hope that I have shown you that OpenBIS can help you in the different phases of the, uh, help you and support you in the different phases of the data life cycle. So now I just have a few words uh, on the services that, uh, that we provide. So we provide, we provide OpenBIS as a service inside ETH. We started doing this in 2018. And essentially we have uh, three types of services. One is called the Research Data Hub, which is uh, basically one OpenBIS instance where any of uh, the ETH groups uh, can request access. This has some limitations um, because uh, uh, the groups cannot have administrative rights here. So this is suitable for groups that do not require uh, extensive customizations and also uh, for groups that are not working with sensitive data. Similar, and this is a free service that we provide to ETH. Then there is the departmental data hub, which is fairly similar, but uh, so different groups can get an account on this instance. And this, is, this would be dedicated to departments. So at the moment, we have only one of these instances at ETH. So the groups of a particular department can have an account. So it can be customized, this instance, for the needs of the group of the, of the department. Uh, again, it's not really suitable for uh, um, sensitive data. And finally, we have the last option, which is the research data node. And uh, this is uh, a private instance, let's say. So it is an instance that is dedicated uh, to one group or uh, one project also. And in this case, uh, the group can have uh, administrative rights to this instance. So it's more suitable for those cases where one needs to have extensive customization of the system. And also it is suitable for uh, uh, working with sensitive data because in this case, what we would do is that we would actually provide this instance inside our secure infrastructure that is also managed by us, which is called uh, LeoMed. 
And then we provide services also for the Swiss academic uh, community. So not only at, uh, at ETH, but also in Switzerland in general. And actually these uh, services were established thanks to a um, program, a project by Swiss universities. And the project ran uh, between 2019 and 2020. So we officially started the service in 2021. What we do with this service is that we provide uh, OpenBIS as, uh, um, uh, as a solution hosted on the cloud. So this is uh, as a um, cloud provider, we use uh, switch engines. And what we can do is that we can provide one OpenBIS either for one group or for um, uh, several groups for a, for a department or an institute. And uh, optionally, these OpenBIS can be connected uh, to a Jupyter Hub server. There are, we also have cases where um, some institutions prefer to have a local installation of OpenBIS, but maybe they require our support. So in that case, what we can do is we can have a small support contract and uh, basically we can uh, um, provide support, both technical support and user support for, the, um, for, uh, for using OpenBIS and getting started with OpenBIS. Then we always provide training and best effort uh, user support. And here you see uh, a few examples of the current customers. So what do we provide with these uh, services? Uh, well, uh, we take care, as I said, of the installation, initial installations, either on ETH infrastructure or on switch engines, depending um, on who are the customers, whether it is ETH, uh, ETH group or non-ETH group. We take care of uh, uh, the maintenance of the infrastructure, of the upgrades of the, of the software, and so on. We provide consulting, and uh, we can provide uh, tailored data modeling. So at the very beginning, when you start uh, setting up uh, your, uh, your system, we can help you uh, with the customization. And uh, finally, we provide regular user trainings and, uh, and user support. So this is a, a brief overview of uh, what OpenBIS can do for you and how we from SIS can help you in using OpenBIS, the services that we provide. Here on the last slide, I have some contacts uh, and useful information like the website of OpenBIS, website of SIS, and then where you can contact us. And uh, this brings me to the end of the presentation. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. <laughs>